the Lord is good. And every day the Lord's name is the same. Today, yesterday, and forever, God is good. If you're in our midst today, as a visitor, we are thankful for your presence. As our ushers are coming down now, if you will raise your hand, they will give you a visitor's card, and we ask once you have received it, that you will complete the card, and the announcer will recognize your presence. Again, we thank God for your being present here, as we have gathered for our gospel meeting of proclaiming the truth. Mm -hmm. Our gathering is by no means to belittle anyone's faith. But is it help men to understand the difference between truth and error? Yeah. That men may come to know who Jesus the Christ is. Yeah. So we have gathered, and we are thankful to God for allowing us the privilege as saints of His to come together. Mm -hmm. We're grateful for our guest song leader being with us, leading us in our songs on today. Our speaker needs no introduction. Right. He has been with us before last year. Right. He did a magnificent job with our theme at the banquet. As he talked about the choice of commitment, faith, family, and friends. He hails from the Sunshine State, Florida. Grew up under the gospel preaching of Dr. W.F. Washington. He is the minister for the Ninth Street Church of Christ in Winter Haven, Florida. Mm -hmm. Winter Garden. I knew it was one of the winners. <laughs> and of course, he has been there for 18 years, proclaiming the word for 26 years. He is married to the former Carol Chapman. They've been married for 22 years with two adult sons. Two they years? Man, you don't continue to add. Amen. That's good to know. That we have a man of God still proclaiming, still married, teaching God's way. Yeah. He's going to come before us, proclaim the good news of Jesus. As he has done in the past, we anticipate as children sitting at his feet to learn what thus says the Lord. Yeah. We are going to ask Brother Kenny Williams to come back. I believe also Brother Harvard. And then Brother Jones are all going to join in to lead us in a song together. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to ask that you stand at this hour. And let us receive the next voice, the preacher, the herald of truth, God's man, Brother Xerxes Snail.
if you're here this morning and God has been good to you, say amen one more time. Amen. I know that the God that we serve is a good God. Mm -hmm. I know he's a good God because he woke us up this morning, yeah. started us on our way, yeah. allowed us to be able to get out of our beds of slumber and sleep, put one foot in front of the other, and to be able to assemble ourselves here for the sole purpose so that we can worship him in spirit and in truth, to give him praise, glory, and honor because God is truly worthy to be praised. Yeah. I know he's worthy. I know he's worthy. You may have some problems this morning, but God is still worthy. Your bills may be behind, but God is still worthy. Isn't he worthy? He is worthy to be praised. No matter what your situation is, God is still worthy to be praised. You may be having a bad hat day this morning, but God is still worthy to be praised. Yeah, he is worthy. He is worthy. And we're glad to be able to come this morning to render God honor and praise. It is so good to see all of the saints uh, here at the Central Church of Christ. It is great to be here in the great city of Baltimore uh, once again, and I am delighted, I'm thankful, and I'm grateful, uh, first of all, to God for granting uh, unto us traveling mercies uh, to be able to be here and to be able to be a part of this great gospel meeting. And uh, we're thankful uh, and uh, grateful to your uh, senior minister, uh, my friend, a great preacher, Brother William Rupert, uh, for extending the invitation to come to share our faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm just delighted. The more, I'm, the more I'm around Brother Rupert, the more I love him, the more I appreciate him because he is such a great man of God. Uh, he is such a great husband. Uh, he is such a great father, but he's an even better person. Amen? Uh, he's an even better person, and I'm thankful. Uh, I want to surround myself uh, with good people, uh, people that's going to help me uh, to be better. Amen? Mm -hmm. And you need to learn how to surround yourself with folk that's going to help you and drive you and push you to be better. Mm -hmm. We got enough, enough folk that's trying to tear us down. We got enough crabs in the bucket trying to pull us down. But we need to surround ourselves with some folk that's going to help us to be better. Amen? And I'm thankful that God has allowed our paths to cross and to be able to get to know him uh, each uh, better, 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 and better each day. And I'm appreciative to him. And I pray that this church will continue to be a blessing to him uh, as he is being a blessing to you. Uh, because we know as it is written in the book of Exodus, uh, when you are a blessing to the man of God, when you raise up and keep up the hands of the man of God, then the Bible says that God will bless you. He'll bless the church. As long as you continue to hold up his hand, the Bible says that that, that when the man of God's hand was held up, uh, that, that Israel, the people of God, prevailed. Amen? Y'all know y'all Bible, don't you? Uh, but when his hands got heavy, then the enemy began to prevail. And I pray that, that this church will continue to hold up the hand of this great man of God uh, that God has put in your midst. And I pray that you will continue to be a blessing to him, but not only for him, but also to the first lady, to his wife. And that we appreciate her so very much for uh, all that she means to him and his ministry, to this church. Uh, and we appreciate the hospitality uh, that she always extends unto us. And not only for her, but all of you who have been so hospitable uh, we appreciate it so very much. Our accommodations were great. And everybody has been loving. Everybody has been caring and kind. Yes. And we appreciate that. And you don't get that everywhere you go. Uh, I have an opportunity. I'm, I have the privilege to be able to travel this nation. And uh, everybody is not uh, as kind and loving as the people here at Central. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some places, Brother Rupert, that call me to preach. Uh, after it's over, I hope they don't call me again. 
hope they don't call me back. Because uh, sometimes some folk don't know how to treat you. Don't, some folk mm -hmm. don't know how to treat you. And uh, But I'm thankful any time I get a call from Brother Rupert, uh, I am willing uh, to open up my schedule uh, to be here because I know the people here at Central are good folk mm -hmm. and loving people, and I appreciate you so, Amen. so very, very much. We want to thank our men this morning who have led us in our worship uh, on this morning. We appreciate them. Uh, all of them did a wonderful job. Let's give them a love deposit this morning. All of our men who led our worship. On this morning, they did an outstanding job, and we appreciate them. Appreciate Brother Williams uh, once again for coming and being a part. And I understand that he's here on a regular basis, and uh, we appreciate him. And I, I get to know him a little bit better, more and more each time I've been able to be here. And we appreciate him so, so very much. We had a wonderful Sunday school uh, on this morning, and uh, Amen for those who are here. Amen. We had a wonderful time and uh, uh, said some uh, great things that were hopefully that resonated into our hearing that will hopefully help the church here uh, as you move forward. Uh, this week has been designed uh, to be a series of meetings uh, for people to be exposed to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So we hope that you will come out. We hope that you will invite somebody, a co-worker, a neighbor, a friend, uh, invite even an enemy, and, uh, and amen somebody, and uh, so that they can be exposed to the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we're going to be, we're going to be doing some things this week that are evangelistic, but we also want to do some things this week that will be revivalistic as well, uh, because, because sometimes we need to be uh, re-energized. Those of us in the body of Christ, amen, we need to be re-energized. We, we need to recommit ourselves uh, to Jesus Christ. So we're going to be working with that uh, all week long. Uh, this morning, I want to uh, uh, call your attention to the text that has been read uh, in your hearing from the book of 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter number 7. Uh, we shall read verse 12 to 14. Second Chronicles, chapter number 7, verse 12 through 14. Where I'm from, uh, back home, what we do is we stand for the reading of the Word of God. Uh, uh, if if y'all don't mind, if you don't mind indulging with me, if you are able to stand, if you're able, if you're able, we're going to ask that you stand for the reading of the Word of God. Second Chronicles, chapter number 7, verse 12 through verse number 14. And the Bible reads as thus, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night, and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer, and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Yeah. I want you to turn to your neighbor. And I want you to tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh neighbor, when God gives you a prescription, God gives you, a prescription. you better not change your prescription. You better not change your prescription. I want to talk to you from the subject of the danger of changing your prescription. Mm. You may be seated in the presence of God. The danger of changing your prescription. Most of us, if not
not all of us have visited the doctor and walked away with a prescription. After a series of tests and interviews, physical examinations, many people leave the doctor's office with a to-do list. Sometimes the doctor gives us a referral to another doctor, an appointment for screening, and sometimes the doctor just gives us some sound advice. Mm -hmm. Many times patient leaves the doctor's office with a prescription for special medicine to be taken at specific times and under specific conditions. Some prescriptions are simple. They only require an over-the-counter medicine. Others require restricted medicines that cannot be purchased without a doctor's order. And even then, it can only be refilled according to the doctor's instructions. But what's on a prescription? Well, a prescription usually tells the name of the medicine that's being prescribed, how often it should be taken, and how many pills or how many spoonfuls should be taken each dose, and how each dose should be taken. The prescription also tells us how much medicine should be given to you the first time and how many times you can refill the prescription. The doctor will then sign it and date the prescription to verify that the prescription has been prescribed by a professional. The prescription a patient receives is associated with a diagnosis or a determination of the nature of an illness. It's also associated with a prognosis or a course of action that will lead to an outcome. It's important for patients to take medicine as it has been prescribed and not try to change the prescription. Are y'all with me this morning? The story was told of a man who left the doctor's office with a prescription to take one aspirin a day for his heart. The doctor said that one aspirin will help prevent a heart attack. And the patient thought that he was real smart. He thought he was smart. In fact, he thought he was so smart, he figured that, well, 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 if one aspirin is good, then I'll take two. Two will be better. So then he changed his simple prescription and made a prescription of his own liking. Every day he took two aspirin. He, he felt good about himself and he had no problem until one day his nose started to bleed. And it bled, and it bled, and it bled. He panicked and rushed to the, was rushed to the ER. They, then when they learned that he had been taking two aspirins a day, they told him, your doctor prescribed one aspirin a day to thin your blood just a little bit to prevent a heart attack. And when you changed it and you took two aspirin, you made your blood so thin that you almost killed yourself. Mm -hmm. Y'all ought to be with me this morning. And it's the same way with us sometimes. God has given us a prescription as it pertains to salvation, as it pertains to the church, as it pertains to how to live the abundant life in Jesus Christ. But there are too many people who have tried to change God's prescription. We've added some things. We've taken away some things that has created, uh, equated to a salvation of our own liking, of a church of our own own and a life of our own. And watch this. Here's the irony. Here's the irony. When it comes to our health, we trust our doctor and we follow his orders. We get treated from a doctor whose name we can't pronounce. We get treated from a doctor whose degrees that are on the wall that we never took time to verify. Y'all ain't with me this morning. We leave his office with a piece of paper that we can't even read. We give it to a pharmacist that we never met. He gives us or she gives us a chemical compound that we don't understand. And we take it home and we take every pill according to the instructions on the package. We 
trust the doctor and we trust the pharmacist, but when it comes to God, mm -hmm. the one we have already verified, when it comes to God, the one who is the Almighty, when it comes to God, the one who is omnipotent, the one who is omniscient, the one who is omnipresent, we can read and understand the word of God, but when God gives us a prescription for how we ought to live and what church we ought to be a member of, oftentimes there are many people who don't follow the prescription. Prescription says in John 4 in verse number 24 that we should worship God in spirit and in truth. But some folk have changed the prescription and we worship God according to the doctrines and the commandments of men. Right. The prescription says still, Hebrews 10:25. That we should not forsake the assembly of ourselves together. But some have decided to change the prescription and decide to go to church when they get ready. Right. Y'all get quiet on me. The scripture said in Matthew 16 and 18 that Jesus built only one church. Amen. But some have changed the prescription and decided to go to the church of their choice. Amen. The prescription said in Ephesians 4, verse 4 through 6, that there is one body, one spirit, even as ye are called, and one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through you all and in you all. It's amazing that if I were to ask the question, how many is one? Most of us, if not all of us, would look at me and try to figure out what I was smoking before I got here. Uh -huh. Because the answer lies in the question. When it comes to the number one in arithmetic, there's not a lot of speculation as to how many is one or how we get one. Mm -hmm. I was taught in school that one plus zero equals one. Is that what you were taught? I was taught in school that one times one equals one. Either way, the answer was, and the value of one was one. One was not two, and two was not one. One was not ten, and ten was not one, because there's only one one. Right. Okay, well, y'all figure that out on your way home this morning, all right? I know there was a whole lot to give you there. See, this concept makes sense. It makes good sense in mathematics, but it seems like it makes no sense in hermeneutics. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It makes good sense from the geometry book, but it seems as if for a lot of people it makes no sense from God's book. There are those who have come to the conclusion that one means one any time and every time except for when it comes to the word of God. Hmm. To them, when it comes to the word of God, one takes on a very different meaning. One means many to people out in the world, uh, out in the world. But I stopped by this morning to let you know that one means one. Right. Numbers in the Bible are very significant. Ten is important because there were ten commandments. Nine is important because the Bible tells us that there were nine lepers that were ungrateful. Eight is important because the Bible says that there were eight souls saved by water. Seven is important because the Bible says that, 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 that God rested on the seventh day. Six is important because the Bible says God created the world in six days. Five is important because the Bible says that there were five wise virgins. Four is important because the Bible says that there were four of the synoptic gospels. Three is important because there are three in the Godhead. Two is important because there's one for the Old Testament, one for the New Testament, but when it comes down to the church, thank God there's only one. Amen. One way, one name. And when you change the prescription, the results are catastrophic. No matter how difficult it may seem, when you change what God has prescribed, we may think it's better, but soon you're going to find out that all you're doing is killing yourself. 
You can try to add to the word of God, but the Bible still says every plant, Matthew 5, 13 and 14, every plant which my heavenly father have not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall in the ditch. The Bible is still right. Mm -hmm. Every false doctrine, every false teacher, every false practice, every false worship, every church that does not belong to Jesus will be rooted up. Amen. And that's why we need to be following God's prescription. Amen? We may not be the most popular church in town, but we're still the Lord's church. Can I get an amen from Church of Christ people? Amen. But not only that, God has a prescription for living. And you can find it in the word of God. Listen, listen. When our marriages are marred in misery, and there are a lot of people who come to church, to worship, and they come smiling on the outside. But if the truth be told, they're hurting on the inside. They come holding hands, walking in the sanctuary, but they leave fighting one another, headed back home. Y'all, are y'all with me this morning? When our marriages are marred in misery, when our children are challenged, when our siblings are struggling, when our families are failing, when our health is waning, when our prayers are pathetic, when our praise is passive, when our hopes are hindered, when our dreams are dwindling down, when our joy is jilted, when our debts are mounting, when our finances are declining, when the economy is not moving, you and I, we need a prescription. Yes. We need a prescription that will work in our lives. I need a prescription that will work in my trials. I need a prescription that will work in my storms. I, I need a prescription that will work in my marriage. I need a prescription that will work in the face of the death of my loved ones. I, I need a prescription that will hold me when the doctor has given up on me. I need a prescription that will hold me when my friends have walked out on me. I need a prescription that will hold me up when Satan is trying to put Pull me down. Yeah. And that prescription is the word of God. I don't need opinions. I need a word. I don't need history. I need a word. I don't need biology. I need a word. I don't need philosophy. I need a word. I don't need astrology. I don't need psychology. I don't need sociology. I don't need Scientology. But I need a word. Yes. I need a word from the Lord. I don't need a word from the National Enquirer. I don't need a word from Star Ebony Magazine. I don't need a word from USA Today. I don't need a word from CNN, TBN, TBS, MSNBC, ABC, HBO, Showtime, Cinemax, Fox. I don't need a word from Oprah Winfrey. I don't need a word from Tavis Smiley. I don't need a word from Tom Joyner. I don't need a word from Steve Harvey. I don't need a word from Bill Clinton. I don't need a word from George W. Bush. I don't need a word from Barack Obama. I don't need a word, and I sure don't need a word from Donald J. Trump. But I do need a word from the Lord. Man. I need a word. I need a word. I need a that come challenge in my life when I just need a word. Yes. I, I need a word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love good singing. I, singing, it, it, it does something to stir up the heart. And, and, and singing is the universal language. And, and we all love good singing. But there comes time, too, when I need a word. Yes. I need a word. Mm -hmm. I need a word. The psalmist says, Psalms 119, forever, O oh Lord, thy word. Is settled in heaven. God's word is settled. You know, you can try to deny it. You can ignore it. You can misunderstand it. You can try to misapply it. You can try to add to it. You can try to twist it. You can try to lie about it. You can try to neglect it. You can try to hate it. You can try to misrepresent it. But you can't change it. 
Because God's word is set up forever and help. In our text in 2 Chronicles, God's response, he responds to a prayerful request for the presence of God by the children of Israel. Solomon constructed a great temple that was to become the literal house of God. Israel had meandered between godliness and idolatry for years, drawing the anger and the wrath of God. The health of the nation was affected. Their national pride and their enthusiasm began to decline. The people hoped that building a new temple or tabernacle would result in God's blessings and favor. They ask for forgiveness. They ask for healing. And they ask for salvation. And they receive an answer from God. They receive an answer. And when God spoke to Solomon, telling them that forgiveness and healing and salvation that they sought would require them to repent. Turn from their wicked ways and continuously seek the mercy of God. And there are a lot of people today who seek healing, who seek forgiveness, who seek salvation, but yet they don't seem to want to turn from a religious system that was started by man and not prescribed by God. Mm. It was very clear in the text. Now watch, watch the text. Watch the text. Again, 2 Chronicles seven, uh, chapter 7, verse number 14. Watch the text. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, from their wicked ways. Watch this. Then will I hear from heaven. Will forgive their sins. Heal their land. Now you need to see two very important words in this text. If and then. Underline that in your Bible. If and then. If is one of the smallest words in the English language. But it can have some of the biggest effects on a person's life. Mm -hmm. The dictionary defines if as the cause or the reason or motive for something to happen. If is the word that invokes a response for action. The word if is considered the cause portion of the cause and effect in the English grammar. Yes, yes. When if statements are used, they are generally followed by then statements. Right. Stay with me now. Which are the effect part of the cause and effect. Yes. The then statement tells what can or will happen when we fulfill the if statement. This is what we see in our text. God says, if, that's the cause portion, my people call by my name, humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Then, that's the effect. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, heal their land. The word if is a conditional word. Man. It gives a condition that must be fulfilled before a result is seen. Amen. Y'all ain't hearing me this morning. God conditions were for his people to humble themselves, to pray, to seek his face, and to turn from their wicked ways, their own prescription, and he said, then you're going to see some results. Mm -hmm. You see, there are too many people in the church today, we want to get to the then, but we don't want to deal with our ifs. You 
See, brothers and sisters, if you can get your if together, God says, then I will help you get your then together. You see, you, you see, when, when Solomon asked for wisdom, God blessed him, and he said in 1 Kings chapter number 3 and verse number, number 14, he says, and if thou will walk in my ways to keep my statutes, keep my commandments as thy father David, then I will lengthen your days. Man. You see so I stop by this morning to let you know that whenever you ask God for something, your answer just may be in your if. Okay, y'all ain't, ain't sipping me. Y'all ain't. Whenever you ask God for something, the answer might be in your if. So many times we want something from God and we want it right now. But God says if he says, you will get to then if you deal with your if. If you stop robbing God of his money. Mm. I wish I had some help up in here this morning. Yeah, yeah, I'll bless you if you stop robbing God. Yeah, yeah, if you stop cussing folk out at work. Yes. If you stop smoking weed. Yes. If you stop cheating on your taxes. Yes. If you stop lying. If you stop backbiting. If you stop gossiping. If you stop stealing. If you stop clubbing. If you stop being disobedient. If you stop being inconsistent. If you stop being selfish, self-righteous, hypocritical, judgmental. If you come out of denominationalism. Mm. God says, if you deal with your ill, then I will deal with your then. Yes. Because God is the one who has the power to take your ifs mm -hmm. and bless your then. Man. He says, if my people call by my name would humble themselves. To learn how to humble ourselves. I told about that. I told about that this morning in Sunday school. We need to learn how to humble ourselves so that we can even get along better in the church. Mm -hmm. Because we we have in many cases we have partiality amongst ourselves in the body of Christ, and we need to learn a little bit of humility. Amen. Mm -hmm. So that we can be a better body. So that we can be a more attractive body. Because when folk come in from the outside, they are looking at the folk on the inside. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? Now, now what we understand is, is that we ought to be showing them Jesus. Mm -hmm. But they're looking at us to see if there's any Jesus in you. Yes. Are y'all with me? So, so we, we, we need to learn how to humble ourselves. If you take care of your ifs, God will take care of your then. Mm -hmm. You see, when the doctor gives you a prescription, sometimes, you know, it's good to know how to read the prescription. So you, and, and that means you got to do some research on what the doctor prescribed for you. Good patients learn how to read a, good, a doctor's prescription. Oftentimes, what looked like chicken scratch own prescriptions is a list of abbreviations written in Latin. Those of you all who are in the medical field, those who are nurses, perhaps even doctors know that QD means every day. BID means two times a day. QID means four times a day. Sometimes special instructions are in Latin such as PC, which means don't take it on an empty stomach. Or AC, which means take it before your meal. It helps to know how to read the prescription that your doctor gives you, but it's more important to know how to read the prescription that Dr. 
Jesus gives you. In Bible study and worship, we learn to understand what God has prescribed for us to do. That's why Paul Timothy told Timothy, study to show thyself approved under God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yeah. Sometimes the doctor will give a patient a prescription that requires specific medicine. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's marked no substitution. Yeah. But yet, many of us will try to get a generic brand that will do the same thing because it's cheap. God has given us specific prescription and many times we try to change the prescription into something generic yes. when God when the doctor gives a prescription it tells us when we ought to take our medicine and how much medicine we should take mm -hmm. we run into problems if we change the prescription and take any amount that we see fit any time that's convenient for us that's the same way people Christians do with the church. The Hebrew writer says that we ought to be here. We ought to be here. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was two amens out of 500 people. The Hebrew writer said in 10, Hebrews 10, 25, we ought to be here. That, that's basically what he said. We ought to be here. If you are not sick, if, you don't, if you're not required to be at work, you ought to be here. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. But some people have changed the prescription yeah. to mean I will come when it's convenient for me. Mm. When I get around to coming. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? Yeah. You see, the reason why some of us, we never get well, we get sick. And we stay sick. It's because we don't follow the instructions. We don't follow the prescription. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you what some of y'all do. Y'all get a prescription. The doctor give you a prescription. You take it to the pharmacist. He fills it. You get the prescription. The prescription says take two tablets daily uh, for thirty days. That's what they say. Now here's what we do. We sick as a dog. We take two tablets for seven days. As soon as we start feeling better. As soon as we start feeling better, we stop taking the rest of the medication. But the prescription said we need to take it for 30 days. Yeah. But there's a reason why the doctor wants your crazy self to take it for 30 days. Because it takes 30 days of that antibiotic to get all of that stuff out of your system. But you think you so smart when you get the feeling better, you stop taking the prescription. Yeah. Y'all ain't feeling me this morning. Mm. And what happens with us is we go through things in life, things happen to us in life, and then what we do is we'll come back to church, we'll worship God, and we'll sing about how good God is. As soon as things start getting better in our lives, we leave the church. Mm. You need to take your prescription. Mm -hmm. As he prescribed. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? Yes. When you can be here, you ought to be here. Okay. See, I don't know about you, but 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 I don't need nobody to pump me up to come to worship. Mm. I, I don't need nobody to, to call me to come to worship. I don't need nobody to prime me up to come to worship because all I gotta do is to think about how good God has been to me. When I think about where God has brought me from, when I think about where he has brought me from and where he 
has brought me to. And when I think about how bad I've been and how good he is, all I do is think about it. And I can't wait to get in the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He's been so good to me. Makes me want to worship. Yes. I'm going to talk about that on this afternoon. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more on this afternoon. But, 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 but you ought to have a heart that says, God, you've been so good, I can't do nothing but worship. Mm -hmm. And then when we come to worship, we ought to be worshiping. Everybody who comes to worship, don't worship. Some of y'all on Facebook right now. I ain't talking about the ones who record. I'm talking about you on there talking to your friends. You communicating with other people. Some of y'all playing Candy Crush. Angry Birds. Solitaire. When is he going to sit down? But don't thank God for the people who come to worship and they come to worship God in spirit and in truth because you know that your heart won't do nothing but let you worship. When the song leader is singing, we are singing along with the song leader because God has been good to us. Oh, how I love Jesus. We come to worship. God and spirit and the truth. Those, as I close here, those who follow God's prescription will have a healthy prognosis that will lead to salvation and everlasting life. God's prescription for Solomon was humility, prayer, and repentance. And if they followed the prescription, then God promised a healthy prognosis that he would heal from heaven and he would heal their land. Right. The call to repentance is a prescription that cannot be substituted by a generic. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Amen. It can't be substituted with a generic. When we repent, we change our ways, we change our direction, we change our path. But then the prescription says that after you have repented, you must confess Christ to be the son of the living God and be baptized in water so your sins will be washed away. Man. But I came in that day to tell you, you see, you can substitute Walmart's Equate brand for name brand. Mm -hmm. You can substitute Sam's Choice for this journal. You can substitute Great Value for Craft. You can substitute Honey Buzzers for Honeycomb. Some of y'all don't eat generics. <laughs> I know y'all got it good now. Y'all know that there was a day we used to get government cheese. <laughs> that big old hard block of cheese. Y'all ain't <laughs> You can substitute honey nut spins for honey nut Cheerios. Oh, <laughs> you can substitute Colossal Crunch for Captain Crunch. Mm -hmm. You can substitute fruit spins for fruit loops. Man. You can substitute fruity tooties for fruity pebbles. Alrighty. But I came by this morning to tell you that you can't substitute water baptism for sprinkling. You can't substitute water baptism for pouring. You can't substitute water baptism for calling on the name of the Lord only. You can't substitute mechanical instruments of music for vocal singing. You can't substitute taking the Lord's Supper once a month for every Lord's Day. You can't substitute the pride of Christ or the church for a name that's not his bride. You can't substitute the blood of Jesus for a generic blood. Man. Ain't no substitute. Brother Reuben, when we're sick in the body, we can go to the drugstore and get over-the-counter medication. When you got a headache, uh-huh, you can get some extra strength mixing. Mm -hmm. When you got
got a stomachache, you can get you some Pepto-Bismol. Mm -hmm. When you got chronic pain and fever, you can take you some Advil or Tylenol. Mm -hmm. When you got irregularity, you can take you some x lax mm -hmm. Lord, help us, sister. <laughs> when you got aches and pains, you can take 24 hour a lead. Mm -hmm. But I came today to tell you that when you are sick in your spirit, there is no over the counter medication that you can take. Tylenol can't cure your cancer of carnality. It can't cure your diabetes of deceitfulness. It can't cure your migraines of messiness. It can't cure your heart disease of hatred. Advil can't cure your gangrene of greed, your fever of fornication, your bruises of backbiting, etc. can't cure your acne of arrogance, your influenza of inconsistency, your malaria of misery, a Leave can cure your soreness of selfishness, your side effects of self-righteousness, your ulcers of envy, your headaches of heartiness. These diseases can only be cured by the blood of Jesus Christ yeah. and a follow-up of four daily doses of prayer, one daily dose of devotion, one weekly dose of worship, one weekly dose of Bible study, a generous dose of joy, and a heavy dose of forgiveness. Sometimes when you go to the doctor, the doctor will tell you that you need to change up your eating habits. He may tell you to add more fruit in your diet. Fruits such as apples, fruits such as oranges, fruits such as pears, fruits such as plums are considered smart carbs. When I came back this morning to let you know that Dr. Jesus gave us a prescription to add some fruit of the Spirit to our spiritual diet. He said, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, is joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And then sometime the doctor will suggest that you add some more vegetables to your diet. The nutrients in vegetables can help reduce the risk of heart disease and cancer. But Dr. Jesus came and told us to add some vegetables to our spiritual diet. We need a daily consumption of some squash. We need to squash gossip, squash envy, squash lies, squash disputes, squash backstabbing, backbiting, squash bitterness, and then we need some lettuce. Let us not desire vain glory. Let us come boldly to the throne of God. Let us lift our hearts to the Lord. Let us walk honestly. Let us not grow weary in well-doing. Let us not judge one another. Let us follow after things that make for peace. And then he said, you need to add some turnips to your diet. You need to turn up for Sunday school. Turn up for what? Turn up a sister's class. Turn up a Bible study. Turn up for evangelism class. Turn up for youth ministry. Turn up for marriage enrichment. Turn up for singles ministry. Turn up for ministry work. Then he said, you need to add some peace, some preaching, some prayer, some praise, and some power. And then you don't need to forget the maters. You need some maters in your diet. You see, I made a commitment to God. I made a commitment to my wife. I made a commitment to my family. I made a commitment to be my sister's keeper. I made a commitment to be my brother's keeper. I made a commitment to myself that I'm going to keep my commitment to myself and to the Lord. You need to be committed. You need to be committed. I told you on Friday night, you got a choice. You got a choice. But what good is making a choice if you're not going to commit to what you chose? I told you Friday night, a whole lot of us got excited, ran.
ran up to the altar. Said, I do. One year later, we tried to figure out what was I doing. <laughs> That's because you made a decision, but you didn't make a commitment. Are y'all with me? You see, we, we, we are here. When you walk down this aisle, and if we have one this morning who want to surrender their lives to Jesus, you need to make a commitment. Amen. It's not about being getting excited in the moment. It's about making a commitment. You see, there are some people, I'm convinced, they are more excited about the thought of getting married opposed to being married. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Yeah, we, we, get ex we get excited about the wedding. We get excited about the pomp and circumstance. And all of that other stuff that go in. We get excited about the thought of getting married and not excited about the thought of living together and being married. Mm -hmm. Being committed. When you come, it ain't about you just getting excited in the moment. This is about you making a commitment to Jesus Christ that, Lord, I'm going to live for you no matter what comes, no matter hell or high water, good times, bad times, highs, lows, mountaintops, valleys. I'm going to be committed to you. It's not about being committed to the preacher. It's not about committing to being the answer to the elders. It's not about being committed for the people. It's about you being committed to Jesus. Man. Committed to Jesus. And I came to let you know you be committed and don't change the prescription. Be teachable, be available, be lovable, be workable, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. But don't change the prescription. Be faithful. And move in faith. You see, faith and commitment, they go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. If you have faith in God, mm -hmm. you are going to be committed to God. Okay, let me say that again. If you have faith in God, mm -hmm. you are going to be committed to God. Amen. The story was told of a man as a close who wondered why his blessings always seemed to evade him. And this man had a vision of going to heaven where he was met by one of the angels who invited him in. And once he got in, he noticed that there were a bunch of doors. And he asked the angel, what was behind the doors? What's, what's behind all these doors? And the angel told him, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. But he came to a door that had his name written on it. So he asked the angel again, he said, what's behind that door, Brother Rupert? He says, what behind that door with my name on it? And the angel says, if you really want to know, then let's go in. And they went in and they saw a bunch of shelves. And on those shelves there were a bunch of boxes. And the man asked the angel, why are all these boxes in here in this room with my name on it? And the angel told him, he said, well, these boxes represent the blessings that God had in store to ship to you. But they all came back. Mm. And the man said, well, why did my blessings come back? And the angel says, they came back because when God ships his blessings to us, he always ships them to Faith Street. And if you are not on Faith Street, when God ships, your blessings are going to come back to God's spiritual warehouse. He says all these boxes represent blessings that God sent to you on Faith Street, but they came back here. You see, this box right here, uh-huh, God sent it to you, but when he sent it, you were on Snowfall. 
Baltimore Street. This box here, he sent it to you, but when he sent it, you were on Doubt Drive. When he sent this box, you were on Pity Party Parkway. When he sent this box, you were on I'm Not Worth It Way. When he sent that box, you were on Not Meant For Me Lane. When he sent that box, he, you, you were on Backstabbing Boulevard. When he sent that box, you were on Regret Road. When he sent that box, you were on Complaining Curve. When he sent that box, you were on Attitude Avenue. But you gotta stay on Faith Street. And when you stay on Faith Street, your faith will hold you. And whatever God got in store for you, you will receive all of the blessing God got in store for you because you're gonna stay on Faith Street. When times get hard, you're gonna stay on Faith Street. When you get a bad doctor's report, you're gonna stay on. I wish I had a help in here. You're gonna stay on Faith Street. When folks start stabbing you in your back, you're gonna stay on Faith Street. When the members of the church start running you down, you're gonna stay on Faith Street. When your job starts to try to get you fired and the supervisor gonna try to get you fired, you're gonna stay on Faith Street. Yeah. You gotta stay on Faith Street. And if you stay on Faith Street, God will bless you. He'll bless you as long as you stay on Faith Street because your faith and your commitment are intertwined. As long as you, there's Sister Reed, I was looking for my Sister Reed, there she is right there, praise the mighty name of Jesus. As long as you stay on Faith Street, God is going to take care of you. But too many times we leave Faith Street. Mm -hmm. We let stuff keep us from staying on Faith Street. You see, the older I get, the more I learn that I'm not going to let stuff mm -hmm. penetrate my being. Okay, you don't know what I'm talking about. When you let the stuff on the outside begin to penetrate the inside, sometimes it causes us to abandon our faith. But I read somewhere where well, the Bible says, greater is he that's in me. Than he that is in the world. And I don't worry about the stuff on the outside because I know that God is going to take care of the stuff on the outside. I need to take care of the stuff that's on the inside. Mm -hmm. And as long as I take care of my faith, as long as I guard my faith and I be committed to God, God will continue to bless me. Yeah. And you know what? Here's, here's the good part. God going to bless me even in spite of you. Mm -hmm. God going to bless you even in spite of your haters. They going to hate on you, but God is going to drop a blessing on you. Mm -hmm. And you need to let me. See, I'm thankful for my haters. I celebrate my haters. Hello, somebody. I celebrate my haters because my haters are nothing more than my my motivation for elevation. I don't get mad when people hate on me because I know that God is trying to take me to another level. I say to myself, Lord, you must be trying to take me somewhere because these folks are starting to talk again. They start to tell lies again. You must be trying to take me to another level. And I pray, I thank God, give me the strength to be able to do your will because God takes for stuff that people mean for evil and he turns it into my good. He takes my stumbling blocks and he turns them into stepping stone so I can step up another level high. Mm. What we do is, what we do is, by Kenny, when folks start hating on us, we figure, okay, I got something for you. You gonna hate on me? I'm gonna hate on you. Hmm. That's what we do. There you go. It's, 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 it's in our carnal, 
man to want to do and return back what people do to us. God says, you show more strength when you just allow me to deal with your haters. Mm -hmm. Can I help you with something? <laughs> the best thing you can do when you go to work tomorrow and them folk who've been raising all that hell trying to get you fired Trying to get you rolled up. Mm -hmm. The best thing that you can do is to walk in that office and smile yes. and say, God is good. Yes. But you got to mean it. God is good. Because you know what? There's nothing getting on people's nerves like when they see you, are tr they're trying to kill you, but it don't affect you. Are y'all in here this morning? Yeah. It starts to get on their nerves when they see that what they're doing to you don't affect you. That's because what's going around me, going on around me, I try not to let get in me. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all still ain't feeling me. Can I preach five more minutes? <laughs> A boat will not sink until what's around it begin to get in it. Mm -hmm. As long as whatever is around it doesn't get in it, mm -hmm. it's going to always flow. Man. And you are going to continue to flow as long as you don't allow what's going on around you to get in you. Okay, y'all ain't feeling me yet. You still ain't. How much more preaching I gotta do? Honey, child, they've been talking about you forever. Child, look at what she wears. She ain't got no business wearing that. And now it starts to affect you. It starts to affect your psyche. It starts to affect how you deal with people and how you, how you interact with people. When you allow what's being said about you to affect your inner person. You see, you got to learn how to wrap a barrier, a spiritual barrier around yourself. When I started preaching, I was one of the most sensitive people in the world. But I, I found out that this ain't the job to be sensitive. Hello, somebody. You can't be sensitive and try to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? The preacher and his wife are the most criticized people in the church. Okay, y'all acting like you don't believe me. They're the most criticized people in the church. And you know what? And, 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 and rightfully so. Watch this. Because when you're doing your job, Brother Rupert, you're going to get criticism. Because they said that Jesus came to the earth and did nothing but good. And what did they do? Criticize him. Hello? But if you are sensitive all the time, everything that's said, everything that happens will always bother you. But you can't let. If you're going to be successful in life, you can't let everything affect you like that. Mm -hmm. There's some things and some people you're going to have to let go in order for you to be all that God wants you to be. Man. Hello, somebody. Man. I ain't talking about, I ain't talking about hating nobody. I ain't talking about mistreating nobody. But you need to understand who you need to allow in your inner circle because everybody is not for your good. That's right. You treat them right. You do them right. You speak to them. You help them if they need help. But you need to understand that everybody 
-hmm. that kneels down and pray with you, they ain't praying for you. Mm -hmm. Preach, Neil. Everybody that says amen don't need to be your friend. Preach, Neil. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, 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 if you want your faith to be strong and your commitment to be strong, you need to continue to look to the Lord. Mm. This morning, let's be standing as we prepare for the, for the invitation this morning. If you are here and you're not a member of the Church of Christ, I already told you, Jesus only established one body, mm -hmm. one church. Mm -hmm. You can't find another one in your Bible. That's right. And that church wears the name of Jesus. That's why we call the Church of Christ. That's how we are. We're the Church of Christ. Because the church is the bride of Christ. We wear the name of Christ. Yes. Christ is the bridegroom. The church is the bride. And that's why we're the Church of Christ. Yes. If you are here, this is your opportunity to come to Jesus. To be a member of the church that he established. That he purchased with his own blood, according to Acts 20, verse 28. If you hear, believe that he went to Calvary and died for your sins for the sins of the world, was buried, rose the third day, according to the scripture. Be willing to repent of all of your sins. Repentance means there's a change of your mind that results in a change of your actions. Confess it. We'll ask you one question. Do you believe with all of your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Mm -hmm. If you do, we're going to baptize you today. We're going to baptize you this morning. Amen. We're not going to wait to the fourth Sunday. We're not going to wait to the first Sunday. Today is the day of salvation. Behold, now is the acceptable time for you to be baptized because baptism is to wash away all of your past sins. You'll leave here a new creature in Christ. And you can be like the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter number 8. You can leave here rejoicing. Because you're a new creature in Christ. If you need to rededicate your life, if you've been changing God's prescription, you're a child of God, but you've been changing his prescription. You've been hitting and missing on your worship. Mm -hmm. Hello, somebody. Yes. You've been skipping out on God. You haven't been giving God what belongs to him. You haven't been giving him your praise. You need to rededicate your life mm -hmm. right now while we're together singing the song of invitation. Will you come? Will you come this morning? I'm gonna trade my company on for better one bride. Will you come this morning? Will Is there one this morning? To be better we dedicate your life. I beg you, I beseech you. This is all you got right now. Don't change the prescription. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. Don't change the prescription. Don't change the prescription. That's your role. Oh, 
one is a one. Say to your throne, surround the Lord. He is heaven and shall mention you still can come, you still can come, you still sing it, you still can come. With heaven is all with them, they have sunshine, nothing but sunshine in heaven, nothing but sunshine. No for all them, they have been sunshine everywhere. Oh, yeah. 